If uh, we look at Iraq's potential for oil and gas production over the next decade, it's really an issue of separating below-ground potential and above-ground risk. Iraq has massive resources. Um, nobody has any doubt about that. And getting those resources out of the ground is not technically challenging, certainly compared to deep offshore produ um, production. Where the challenges are is above ground. There are challenges of infrastructure, there are challenges of human resources on the Iraqi side, and there's the challenge of a very fractious and unstable political situation, all of which are issues that conspire to hamper Iraq's potential. So I think as we look forwards, as you see some of the infrastructure issues create bottlenecks, create curtailment of production, as you see some of the impact of sanctions and wars over the past 30 years and what it's done in terms of Iraq's technocratic capability, but crucially how disruptive politics is. What you're looking at is a, is a program and a project that at the beginning had wonderfully high figures and very ambitious figures, 12 and a half million barrels a day by the end of 2017. I think what you're going to get is a far more conservative outcome, um, probably around four and a half to five million barrels by the end of this decade, um, which is still a significant increase in oil production, but nonetheless indicates just how much those above ground risks are militating against Iraq's underlying potential. If we look at the impact of the wider unrest in the Middle East on Iraqi oil production, what you're seeing is events such as the violent civil war in Syria beginning to spill over into Iraq and starting to complicate that political situation that I mentioned. Um, what you're seeing is the very physical overspill, so violence that has increased in those provinces that border Syria and an increase in attacks that are taking place really across central and northern Iraq. But at the same time, the events in Syria and events elsewhere in the region are shaping the minds of rival factions in Iraq and really shaping what they believe is the internal balance of power. In some ways, it's making them more fearful. In other ways, it's making them believe that they have greater scope for activity and initiative. And overall, what it means is none of them are willing to compromise in what was already a fairly uncompromising situation. So beyond the physical threats to production in Iraq, particularly threats in the production in the north of Iraq, what you have is this, this more erosive impact of politics becoming more difficult, politics beginning to fray, and the real risk now in Iraq that the cohesion of the state is at stake. It isn't just a matter of sensible policy. It is a matter over the next decade of whether the political boundaries that we now see in Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon, um, in all of those places will change to such an extent that we will have a brand new map of the Middle East. If you look at the prospects for supply and demand on the global market moving forwards, certainly with the movement that we've seen on the Iranian front, the negotiations between the international community and Iran, Obviously, there is a prospect that a deal will be reached, and if that deal is reached, um, we will get to a position where the Iranians will be able to increase exports. Um, they presently have about a million barrels a day of exports shut in, essentially, because of sanctions. Um, that could come back on the market. And if you look at that within the context of even a, a, a fairly minor increase in Iraqi production, an increase that certainly isn't on the sort of the order and the scale of, of the initial plans, but even if it's a million, two million barrels a day over the next few years, it starts, it's going to create some challenges in the market. It's, we've got non unconventionals coming on, we've got non OPEX supply coming on. So, for OPEX management of the market, for OPEX management of prices, and for the internal cohesion of that organization, you can see some potentially challenging times ahead. How the Iranians, the Iraqis, and the Saudis are going to reach an agreement over quota levels um, if they're reintroduced, and they probably would have to be if you had this large chunk of supply coming back on, is a major political as well as being a major supply-demand question. 
And so a period of weakness in the markets in the next few years is not a given. Um, but certainly there's a possibility that you'll see some significant weakness in prices and a drop in prices if OPEC can't actually manage the collective decision to take volumes off the market if indeed they get to that point.